Woodwork Geek back here again for another installment of building. This week I'm making a oak gate. So I start off by milling timber, same as always, no difference. I cut down a large piece of timber in, in half and then I thickness that down and then cut thin strips to create a um, almost like ship lap kind of or half lap profile for the um, face of the gate. I kind of lose most people about this point. I don't know what it is about milling timber. Um, I kind of agree. It's not the most exciting thing in the world, but it is one of the most important kind of parts to set you up for a perfect project. If you don't get that timber perfectly square, perfectly flat, then you won't be able to make a piece of um, furniture or um, whatever it may be without it being all cupped and bowed. So this this kind of section here is a section really where I would pay the most attention. If you can get that timber all planed all round and square and true across its whole length, then from that point on, you're already winning. Um, if you start off with a cut piece of timber, or cupped or twisted piece of timber, then you're always chasing your towel. And you can see here, I tried to plane this piece of wood, but my planer is not great at planing long kind of pieces of timber this is like 2.4 meters this piece so I use the track saw to straighten it up so that I get dead square dead flat um, joins so that I don't have any problems later on everything is about preparation the way I tend to do this is to go to the planer get one reference edge make that so that it's perfectly flat against the whole length and make sure it's true once you get that edge then place that edge against the fence on the planer and plane the bottom edge against the, the knife block that will give you a dead 90 degree um, cut so then you've got two that are perfectly kind of 90 degrees run the the what width or the widest part of that through the thicknesser plane in the top edge of that and then you've got three items that are then in line once you've got three that are in line you come to the table saw cut it to the dimension that you want and then just run it quickly through the planer and you've got PAR timber all the way around it doesn't sound like much but when you're making um, big projects it can take quite a period of time so I'm going to fast forward right now and get through all that and leave you to um, more exciting viewing. So at this point I've machined all, all the timber up into slats and what I'm doing with these slats is I'm using a rebate bit um, or rabbit bit whatever you want to call it um, along the edge to create a half lap in essence so I, I set the depth so that it's really accurate so that each side of that profile is half of the other side and then I, I do each um, edge of the timber so that they can go over the top of each other and this is what I use for the the main infill on the door it gives quite a distinctive um, pattern and when I'm doing the pattern I then use a chamfer bit on two of the edges so you get like a V um, groove that goes from top to or from the head of the door down to the floor um, this creates quite a beautiful looking kind of feature that's very distinctive here I am set up with a um, kind of router um, with a V bit in it and I just use a couple of feather boards to make sure that that piece of timber is perfectly flat against the fence so that when I run the timber through I get a perfect 45 degree chamfer on that edge of the board so that it's as good as it possibly can be for making that profile um, it's a little bit of setup but once you get it set up you can run all the slats through pretty much other than the last slat in one run and it takes kind of no time at all really at that point the key is all in the setting up Here's where you can see that kind of profile. You've got the half lap joint and then on the top and 
um, or left and right sides of that joint, you've got the 45 degree chamfer so that you get a um, distinctive line from top to bottom down. Um, and there you can see it really clearly there. It's kind of, it's an old fashioned traditional joint, but it's just one that kind of works. The rain will drip down that, that V groove, fall out the bottom, um, and there's no kind of seeing through the door. You've got the half lap there, so any expansion and contraction is just taken care of. It's just a good solid way to create the infill for the door. Here I am milling up the head of the door. Now, the head of the door was quite a wide piece of timber, but that piece of timber actually had a, a bit of a cut for it. So what I did is I cut that timber in half and then used the domino to rejoin it back together so that you could barely see that the, the head was actually two pieces. Um, but that just meant that when I planed the timber down, I ended up not having to make it extra, extra thin to keep that kind of wide width of the door to put the arched head in the door clever trick um, always up for saving a bit of timber and here you can see me just doing final dimensions um, next kind of cut it down and I think I do the arch next so I make sure that the door is kind of it's actually an in inch it's 30 inches wide and then I start working out what would be right in terms of the arch um, kind of diameter, so you can see me flexing the, the ruler there. Um, in essence, I did a number of different kind of profiles, and I think the picture will pop up in a second. Um, there you go. And just to, to kind of work out what visually was the best kind of arc, and then I used my circle cutting jig and get the dimension so that from the left kind of style to the right style, the router is touching both of them and then I just go through with kind of four or five mil passes on the router or a quarter inch just taking it back down and creating that curved head of the door so that the slats would then have someone to rebate into this made the door a little bit more complicated to make but what a visual interest um, I have to say it was the right thing to do I was a bit hesitant taking it on because I don't have a spindle molder so it's quite a lot of work for me to do that um, here I am just milling down some more timber and um, this will be for the cross braces the rails so um, I need two rails one for the top one for the bottom so I create that timber and then I take it to the bandsaw and resaw it to make it thin enough so that when the width of the rail plus the width of the um, infill is added together it's the same thickness as the two stars so originally this was going to be a two inch door but when I went to survey the job the the pillar that's holding this door is a kind of metal box section and that box section wasn't man enough to take a kind of two inch thick timber so we both agreed that actually the best thing to do is we make it kind of inch thick or 24 mil um, so that it didn't try and make that kind of box section timber um, bend. Here you can see my bandsaw. It's a love-hate relationship. Sometimes it's magnificent. Sometimes it's complete pain. Um, I've actually ordered a new bandsaw now. Um, I failed a bandsaw to improve my resawing because I'm tired of fixing bandsaws kind of problems when the blade won't track straight. So the biggest problem I got is that the frame of my bandsaw is not strong enough to take the blades that I put in it. Um, so shop upgrade, come in, uh, watch this space. It'll be hopefully here in the next month or so. After machining all the sides and everything, I just had to take a little bit off the kind of infill. So you can see me there with the drum set and they're just taking it down to final thickness. And here me doing just kind of little bit of setup just to get the domino position so that the the head the rails and the styles all work in terms of dimensions and that there makes the door the right kind of witness or width i then use the a couple of bits of infill just to make sure that it's going to kind of work with that and the thickness of the the kind of infill as well as the rails is equal to the styles at this point, I'm starting to get excited. The, the project's coming together. It's looking really good. You can see here, I'm just setting out for the domino joints. I know there's some people that hate dominoes, but 
for me they're just quick and easy um, trusted joint floating tenon can't really go wrong yeah it's a, a real cough drop when you have to buy them but once you've bought the tool actually it just makes everything else so much easier um, but if you haven't got a domino jointer you can use a biscuit jointer you can use um, pocket screws even in this case because they're all hidden underneath the infill special care with the domino when you're cutting pieces of um, timber this thin so this is only kind of 12 mil thick timber so I took extra time to set the domino up to make sure that when those dominoes go into those kind of styles and rows that they're, they're actually in the right places and I'm getting the right orientation for those particular cuts because you can see on that far one there it's quite low on the styles um, you just need to make sure that when you're using the domino it's flat on the workpiece as well if you get slight twist or, or kind of deflection then on pieces with this thin that can cause a massive problem so as always preparation is the key I use small dominoes for the brows and then for the styles I use larger 8mm dominoes and you can see me using the XL700 here and the Naughty converter um, works perfectly fine for me but each to their own see as I put the dominoes in I then dry fit everything as I'm going just to make sure that all the pieces are in the right place at the right kind of depth so that I get no surprises later on and um, this does come back to bite me because little did I know at this point of the braces I was going to use dominoes for as well so I kind of wish in hindsight I'd have not glued up the the frame as early as I actually did glue up the frame but you live and you learn you can see me here I'm I'm doing a test piece of the stars to get the thickness for the groove for the slats to run in um, I don't have a spindle molder unfortunately so I use the table saw with two different width um, kind of positions to get that um, height just perfect the rebate cutter I've got on the router is just a little bit thicker than I would like so I use the rebate cutter for the head of the the door because I can't do that on the table saw obviously but for the stars I cut it to the kind of a bit a slightly snugger kind of fit just so that it's um, the way it should be I'd, I'd probably like to have the rebate bit a little millimeter or so narrower or the the um, kind of slats one millimeter thicker then it would have been fine but we are where we are um, the half width of the timber that I had denoted the, the kind of dimension of the slats and um, doubling up the timber for an extra millimeter which just wasn't a cost option for this particular job there you saw me taking the world trusty cup of tea um, never underrate the power of uh, a cup of tea and here's just one like the final dry fit before I glue it up um, doing the kind of diagonals just to make sure everything is tickety-boo and I'm dead happy with it next comes fitting slats so I start off by roughly placing the, the slats and finding the center point so I measure to find the center and then from the center I then work out with the um, slats um, you can just start to see at this point that those slats are actually book, book matched. Um, so when I cut the timber down, I was very careful to make sure that I kept the orientation of all of those pieces of timber um, labelled so that when I made the face of the door, you could see the book match. So you can see there the kind of grain patterns um, reflecting on each other. Um, simple little touch but such a distinctive detail and not something you see on many gates to be fair um, but if you're going to make something make it the best you can uh, what have you got to lose once I've worked out the, the width of the kind of left hand side you can see me here machining up that piece so uh, it turns into a, a thinner width to then start the pattern off and then on the other side I have to make a double tongued piece to, to fit in so I start on the left hand side here and, and machine it get it ready um, put it in 
um, and then as that piece goes in I then start to work on the kind of curved heads so you can see me using the bandsaw to start cutting the arcs on the top of um, the kind of slats so that you get that kind of curved head and this took took me a few times so the first time I was kind of bandsaw here and put it in and it, it was kind of close but it wasn't I wasn't quite happy with it so in the end I kind of redid some of these I, I kind of had to do it a couple of times to get it so that those that fit was just tight and right and then once all those pieces are um, as they should be I then clamp them together and use the router to um, put the curved profile on the on the head so that they slip into that kind of rebate it took quite a lot of time I'll be honest to get that so that it worked and you can see me here just kind of testing one of those pieces just to fit it in um, it's not an easy job it's not one that I've really got the ideal tools for and so it took me a lot longer than it would take um, someone with the right tool set but you make do with what you got sometimes you just have to kind of persevere and carry on and I was happy in the end and you can see that I'm just starting to use the spacers so that any expansion and contraction of the door is kind of has space to move so I use one mil spacers um, across the width of the door and it's kind of 10 slats I think or 9 or 10 slats so um, it, it's got a bit of room for expansion here you can see the router across the top um, I was talking about earlier and then I used a block plane to just put a little chamfer on that top edge so that when the, the slats go into the head you get that kind of nice V groove pattern across the top um, it came out good but I have to say it was hours and hours of work um, a labour of love all good things take time so you can see me here we move back to the camera obviously photography and videography is not my primary suit um, I resort into the chisel here just to try and make that kind of bevel edge um, as good as it possibly can and, and make sure that the tongue that goes into the head is not too large and stopping those slats from um, engaging fully in the, the top of the door a fiddly job but one that's worth doing it took took its time but it was all good in the end you can see me take it all apart and just do a, a dry fit with everything in place I'm just trying to make sure that everything is as good as it possibly can be um, there's no second takes once you start putting everything together with glue and dowels and stuff because the other thing that I found is, as I was making this is because we made it one inch wide 24 mil wide the slats were only kind of 12 mil or 11 and a half mil and the, the rails were about the same so that it really didn't leave enough meat to put a screw through and then cap the screw with a plug um, so I, in the end I opted to dowel each of those slats rather than screw and glue um, and, and put a cap on the top of them a, a kind of wooden um, plug um, in hindsight I think that's not the ideal way I'd have probably given it an extra kind of four or five mil and actually given myself a bit more chance to put a screw through those um, we'll see if it test, stands the test of time it's for dad so um, chances are I'll know very soon if it's not working <laughs> uh, family jobs are the, always the ones that get uh, instant feedback as you can see it didn't so a little bit more work a little bit more chamfering um, a little bit more fettling just to make sure that that piece works because you can see there the angle wasn't quite right so I recut that angle using a um, pull saw and then um, the faithful chisel 
just to make it as it should be and then here kind of that shot where it just all kind of comes together and I just kind of tweak the, the bevels to make sure that they're perfectly right I must have done this 50 to 100 times. It was just never ending. And it was about this point I realised that actually I'd missed off the cross bracing. So I'd made all of the door, but I hadn't taken account of that kind of diagonal brace needed to stop the door from dropping. And I also wasn't sure which way the door was going to hang because it could either go off of a, a kind of metal box or it could go off of the side of a a garage so um, right about now I kind of decided to hedge my bets so here I am machining up some timber to put in X bracing because um, I kind of decided that X bracing would look um, probably more easy on the eye give some symmetry but equally mean that regardless of whether it was hung from the right or left the the door would be fine there would be no issues with that it hanging from that side so that was me machining that up and here's another dry fit because I just love a dry fit and then oh my favorite sanding there was quite a lot of sanding for this I have to say I know it's only an outside gate so it's not really kind of warranted the fine furniture finish that I do on boards and stuff but I am a bit of a perfectionist if you can make it pretty and you can make it beautiful, why would you not? So here I am with a scraper, just trying to um, tidy it up, make it look as good as it can be, removing any sore marks and getting it to a, a good finish so that when everything goes together, it's it's ready and perfect. And then some kind of shots. So this is door after sand and I was quite pleased so it's not finished it's not um, ready by a long shot but I just did a couple of quick photos to show how it was coming on um, and I was yeah more than pleased I then took the precaution of kind of pre-oiling all of the half laps so I used Osmo's UV protection satin um, and I just rub a generous amount on the kind of tongues um, front and back so that when the door goes together if some rain does kind of drive into that v groove it's always going to hit a piece of wood that's treated rather than untreated with a solid oak door um, you kind of don't want kind of untreated pieces of wood just get to get wet if you can kind of help it um, so i did my best to make sure that everything was as good as it possibly could be I got it wrong. Here's me resawing the the wood for the cross bracing. I'm not sure what I was resawing earlier. I think it was probably the the bit for the tongue. So um, that one's perfect. But here I am machining up the the kind of pieces of timber. So again, 12 mil wide. Um, trying to make the best job of it I can on my kind of bandsaw, and then use the Laguna drum sander to flatten it up. And there's a little kind of test just to give an indication of what it's going to look like and I was more than happy with how that was going to look so I pulled the frame I then put the pieces of wood underneath the frame and then marked out where those cuts needed to be to get the best possible um, kind of look and I was trying to go for the, the most symmetrical I can but because that bottom rail is midpoint of the style rather than midpoint of the door those x's aren't quite perfect if i made it again i'd definitely make that mid rail a little higher so that it's dead center in the door rather than dead center of the styles because um, it would then even up those two cross braces so that you'd have two um symmetry um x's rather than one slightly longer than one slightly shorter but you live and you learn it's the first gate I built so I'm not complaining once I got the the kind of pieces rough cut I then mark them for dominoes you see me here just putting in some more kind of small or smallish dominoes um, because I've glued everything up at this point though I can only do the bottom and center sections I can't do the top sections as well so I have to rely on a glue joint on the top if I made it again 
I would most definitely do these cross braces first. Um, I kicked myself um, silly when I realised what I'd done here. And what I also realised is that the domino uh, machine has a certain offset. So the width I made the cross pieces meant I couldn't use the domino machine to to get in there. So I had to drill the, the kind of bottom rail and mid rail joins by hand. So I used a kind of drill three positions and a chisel to then make it through so yeah a few lessons on this one but um, if you're not learning you know, you're not moving forward so all good in the end though it's, it's held up i've tried racking the door a few times and all of those joints held fast and um, solid so i'm more than confident it's okay here you can see me just marking out the center points of each of those um, cross braces on the outer style so that when I glue up I can draw um, the lines across the, the kind of slats to make sure that everything is in place um, really important that so and one that's used for later now I do the glue up for all the dominoes um, it takes a little while but it's not too bad so um, the key thing is making sure those pieces are ready and finished. Um, I also took the, the kind of time to actually book match those pieces as well. So you don't really notice because they're so far apart. But if, if you get close up or a woodworker looks at it, he'll know that those kind of cross braces are also bookmarked as bookmatched even. The same as all of the, the front slats are. Um, as I said before, if you're going to do it, do it right. Make it the best you can. Um, no points for skimping on these jobs. Now come to dowels. So I've got a new dowel plate for this. A custom, custom made dowel plate with lots of different holes. So I machined down some 7mm timber um, into squares. Trying to keep the grain as straight as I possibly could. And then I went to Hammer Town. Um, and as you can see, I go through each hole one by one just knocking the square off of the timbers and making them rounder and rounder and rounder and rounder until i get to a six mil dowel and then i my kind of drill bit matches that six mil drill quite accurately um it was a labor of love um i enjoyed doing it it was a bit of a time killer but um i can now make dowels of any species of wood I like so very much worth it in the end so after making all the dowels I then apply those kind of lines I marked earlier across the, the kind of slats so that I knew where I was going to have to drill the hole so here I kind of dry fit up again get all the pieces in um, mark it up take it away clean it up for the last time Put it all back in again and mark it again um, just to make sure that they are absolutely perfect i think as i was doing the, the first mock-up i found there was a piece of um, gunk or something underneath one of the slats so it wouldn't fit so i had to redo the whole thing again there but as you can see i'm doing the diagonals the two horizontals to make it as good as i possibly can After I got all the diagonals marked, I then find the center points of each of those diagonals so that when I drill them, uh, I know exactly where the, those drill marks need to go. I set the bandsaw up, cut a 6mm um, hole to match the 6mm dowel, and then it's just repeat hole after hole after hole after hole. Um, it takes me a while, to be fair, to get through all of these, but um, it's worth it in the end. Once I get to the end of drilling all of the dowel holes, it's then time for um, glue up. So I place glue on all the diagonals and then roll that glue in, make sure there's plenty of glue there so there's plenty of contact area. Um, and then I put the infills in. Uh, I mark out each of the kind of spacings with the one mil spacers so that each of those pieces is in the right place. And then once I get everything right, I clamp it down so I can then start to through drill from the top slat through the bottom 
rail. Um, I didn't go, I didn't kind of drill both things at the first time. So you see, I put a little piece of timber underneath to drill through to help prevent breakout as I go through. I just had to realign it there. Obviously, my camera work isn't perfect here because I'm kind of working on the very far left of the um, screen at the minute, but I use a one mil spacer to cut those dowels just a little bit high. So I glue the hole, I drill through, glue the hole, put some glue on the dowel, and then I knock the dowel through, make sure it's come out the bottom, put the spacer on, and then use a flush cutting um, Veritas saw to then cut the dowels so that there's a little bit of kind of movement on those dowels and I just let them dowels go off um, and then I come back a little bit later to cut them flush and then sanding round two kicks in after that point it takes ages to do these dowels I have to say um, I think if I did it again I'd probably rest it on a piece of um, sacrificial timber a bit of MDF or um, plywood or something so that I could through drill all those holes in one go keep moving that piece of timber around and around and around just seemed to elongate the whole process um, and I suspect the drill the glue was starting to go off by the time I kind of got to the last dowels because it was quite a chunk of time to kind of put all those dowels in it wasn't five minutes I mean you probably look at an hour I think and obviously type one three is the glue so 45 minutes is stretching the open time of that glue so um, I was pushing my luck a little bit on this one I think after I'd cut some of the front dowels down on the front well after fitted all the front dowels obviously and, and flush trimmed them down I flipped the kind of gate over so that I can trim some of the backs because some of those are quite long at this point a little bit later after all these dowels have gone off I come back and then get ready to kind of finish it so you, you can see me um, just trimming back all of the, the dowels for the last time and then I kind of rubbing in and, and kind of flattening off some of the kind of poor bits really and sanding it back so that it've got the best kind of finish that I can get on it um, it's not fine finish it's not kind of like the 3 320 I take some of my boards up to um, I, I stopped at about 120 on the gate just so that the kind of grain wasn't too closed from over sanding so the kind of UV protection or can actually soak into it properly um, Sanding is always not the most exciting of things, so I'll save you um, going through all that sanding. After I'd finished the hours of sanding, it was time for the oiling section. So you can see me stir it up, make sure it's all agitated because it's a satin finish. You need to make sure that the kind of tin is well mixed before you kind of start spreading it and I use a, a mixture of a bit of rag to get into those real sharp V's of the X brace and then a microfiber uh, roller to do the kind of bulk infills. <coughs> the, the finish came out better than I expected to be honest. I mean you can see here this is kind of first coat um, and I was really happy with it. Gave it three coats in the end and beveled the bottom by four degrees to let any rain drip off if you like the project like and subscribe if you want me to do anything specific then send me some comments let me know what you'd like to see me build thanks for your time thank you for watching um, hope you enjoyed it and if you made it to the end well done